Well, hi there. Welcome back. Um, I'm Leonardo. I'm civil engineer from Brazil and graduate student in fluid mechanics. So, this is our fourth video on the series of uh, <clears throat> videos on the Navier-Stokes equation and its general properties. And on this particular video, we we'll start talking about some analytical solutions of the Navier-Stokes equation. In this case, <coughs> we arrive at the fundamental equation of hydrostatics, in which is the case of a fluid at rest. Okay. So, uh, as usual, we'll start from the fully the full Navier-Stokes equation. And here we included uh, the term which is due to the gravity force or acting on the fluid, right? <coughs> so, to a first uh, analytical solution of the Stokes equation, we'll make assumption of a fluid at rest. So, the velocity vector is equal to the zero vector in which all its components are zero. So we substitute this in the Navier-Stokes equation, and we can see that the temporal and the convective uh, acceleration term vanishes, as long along with the uh, viscosity term. Okay, so now we are only left with the pressure term and the gravity force. Okay, so. The equation that we are left is called the fundamental equation of hydrostatic or hydrostatics equation. Okay, so the, as you can see here, uh, our only variable left is the pressure. Okay, so we now have in the case of three dimensional space, we have uh, three equations and one variable. Okay. So what this uh, equation saying uh, to us essentially is that the gradient of the pressure field is only dependent on the gravity field along this fluid, okay? And how? And if you are dealing with a stratified medium, in the case where uh, the density varies with along a particular direction, say x, y, or z. Uh, in the gradient of the pressure, the pressure field distribution will only depend on these two variables. Okay. By a stratified medium, we can think of uh, the ocean in the case where we are we are particularly interested in large depths of the ocean where we have a significant variation of uh, the density, okay? Among other examples. So, uh, the function which uh, satisfies our differential equation is uh, a function of x, y, and z, okay? There is no... p is no longer uh, a function of t, right? So, when we expand this uh, vector form here in the three scalar equations, we obtain this set of three equations here, where we have uh, the derivatives with respect to x, y, and z of the pressure field, which is the gradient of P, if you recall from vector calculus. And we have the three components of the gravity acceleration, right? And we have our corresponding boundary condition or initial condition, which is not exactly an uh, initial condition, but at some point in the field uh, of pressure, what, which we are particularly interested, we must know a uh, reference pressure. It could be zero, it could be atmospheric pressure, it could be in fact, any pressure of reference, okay? So we need this information here in order to solve this system of equations. 
So let's uh, take a particular example and of interest and with many applications in engineering, in physics, and uh, among other fields in hydraulics, particularly when studying the forces acting on submerged obstacles at fluids at rest. So uh, this particular example is an hydrostatic distribution in a fluid in which the gravity acceleration is normal to its surface. Typically, it would be this situation here. Imagine that this is a channel. We're seeing the cross section of a channel. Pick a black color here. Okay, so this is uh, the bottom of this channel, and we have uh, water fills up here. Right, so here is our water level. Okay. And our axis uh, are referencing as this here is I'll take the region of axis here. This is the free surface of the channel, and here we have our z axis here this direction we have our x and on this other direction here we have our y x we have our y axis okay so let's say our channel is something something like this Right, so uh, this is a channel, let's say water at rest, and here is the free surface of the channel. Okay, our gravity acceleration pulls in this way in the positive. In the positive uh, z direction. Okay. And this fluid here has a constant density in all directions, which is given by rho. Okay. So uh, on this particular case, we can see that the x and y components of the gravity acceleration are equal to zero, and our component in z is positive and equal to g. Okay. So these equations here, moving this to the right hand side, we obtain this set uh, of equations. Okay, so on this particular case here, uh, we are what this equation is saying that uh, the, the, the variation, the rate of variation of B um, or X is equal to zero and the rate of change of pressure in the Y direction is equal to zero, okay? As we will see further in this video, as we'll see further on this video, uh, there will be only variations of pressure in the Z direction, okay? So we can now uh, integrate this equation. Uh, here I just uh, move the, the differential operator to the right hand side. Here we have zero and we integrate this equation uh, from our reference pressure. Remember our uh, boundary condition is given by this, okay? So integrate from P zero to P and from X zero to X 
uh, y is zero to y and z zero to z. Okay, which is given by this. We are uh, solving the differential, the partial differential equation along the three axes. Okay. So uh, here, when you integrate uh, a constant, uh, sorry, uh, when you integrate zero, you obtain a constant. Here also, uh, you obtain a constant. And here, you obtain a linear function because you're multiple, you're integrating a constant. Okay. One thing to remark here is that uh, this is a partial integration. So your constant of integration will be uh, a function, okay, because this is a partial integration. So you have here, so you have here uh, a constant plus a function of y and z because you integrate it only in the x direction. Similarly, uh, here you have uh, you integrate along the y direction, so you have a known which is uh, this function g, which is function of x and z. And here, uh, as integrated in the z direction, we have this constant of a this constant h, which is which is a function of x and y. Okay. Well, as, as you can see here, uh, this is. Both C1 and C2 are constants which are neither a function of x or y. Thus, by comparing this, uh, these equations, by comparing these equations, we can see that uh, this function h is equal to zero. Okay. So, but now we are left. Uh, we know. Uh, by consequence that uh, f and g are only function of z okay so what we are now left is uh, these three equations here which uh, are only unknown is f and g okay so comparing these three equations we know that uh, f and g are the same and are equal to this uh, expression on the right hand side of the last equation okay because here we so these equations be equal uh, c1 and c2 must be zero and f and uh, f must be equal to g and th these two equations these two these two functions must be equal to this expression here so now we are left with it, this expression here. As you can see, uh, as I said before, the pressure distribution on this case is only a function of C, as stated here, and is given by a reference pressure which is P0, plus it increases with the uh, depth. Okay, so let's say on this case here. Here we have, at this point, we have Z0 and, and here we have our reference pressure uh, which is usually taken as atmospheric pressure and here we have our pressure at the depth Z, okay? So this pressure is a function of Z, right? As you can see here, uh, there is a, is a surface for which all pressure is equal, okay? So this surface here, the pressure is equal for all, for any position in x and y because the pressure distribution only depends on z so we have uh, for each depth of pressure we have an easy surface of pressure okay 
So uh, the resulting equation is known as Stirling law. It has many applications in hydraulics, and in particular, besides uh, other applications in civil engineering, mechanical engineering, and uh, chemical engineering, and so on. Okay. So, by this equation, we can define uh, different types of pressure. Here, when we sum uh, this part here of the uh, expression and our reference uh, pressure, which is usually the atmospheric pressure, we have our total or absolute pressure. Okay? If you take this uh, pressure reference, to the left hand side we obtain what is called the relative pressure this uh, pressure is the most used in uh, dynamics in fluid dynamics in computational fluid dynamics uh, it is all referred as a relative pressure okay in, in physical experiments it is also very often utilized and uh, in situations where we, in the certain phenomena that we are dealing with pressure that is uh, below the atmospheric pressure, it is interesting to deal with uh, vacuum pressure, which is defined as a difference between our reference pressure and our total pressure, okay? So, this equation here we can uh, make it more simple by letting Z0 being equal to 0 and taking the relative pressure, we can write the relative pressure on any points of the depth here as equal to rho G Z or if, if you prefer to call it uh, H, the depth of the channel, we can call it whole G H. This is the simplest form that we see in many textbooks, undergraduates, and some high school textbooks. Okay? So here, um, there is a simple example only to illustrate how one can compute the pressure on the case of uh, a river, of a channel of water, okay? So, if you're interested in uh, applications, you can look at, there are numerous examples over the internet. The purpose of this uh, of this video is to show how we can uh, go from another Stokes equation to the fundamental equation of hydrostatics and derive all its properties okay so I will not go into uh, many examples and exercise regarding this uh, topic okay so for this video this is all thank you for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and uh, i'm looking forward for your feedback don't forget to leave uh, your point of view on my videos okay see you next time